Good morning, everybody. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, distinguished guests from all over the world, and of course, Jewish communities and other dear guests. I have to say that as a Jewish person, I am very excited to be here and to be in this position and in general. We gather here today in Basel to mark the anniversary of the first Zionist Congress. Zionism has been such a success story that it is sometimes forgotten that 125 years ago, many thought that Theodor, Benjamin Zehev Herzl, and his fellow Zionists were just dreamers. They were seen as romantic idealists whose plans for a Jewish state were impractical and implausible. But that first Zionist Congress of 1897 changed history. It started a process that transformed the situation of the Jewish people. For centuries, Jews has been dispersed a minority everywhere, a majority nowhere, facing ever-present prejudice and discrimination. In the Middle Ages, it was the blood libels, expulsions, and massacres. And the 20th century brought the horror of the Holocaust, the industrial scale murder of the six million Jews. Throughout the dark centuries of exile and dispersion, the Jews remained defenseless victims of anti-Semitic hatred and violence. No, the Zionists were not just dreamers. They were the ultimate visionaries. For they made an accurate diagnosis of the Jewish situation and offered a correct prescription for a solution. And as Benjamin Herzl said, and also pointed out in his book, The Jewish State, Medinata Yehudim, Herzl said, the Jewish state will be secure and will take a natural position without getting involved in any conflict and without any foreign army coming within its borders. Its military, its forces, armed with the most modern weapons, will exist only to defend and order internally and to protect its borders from external threats. So when the State of Israel was declared in May 1948, the Jewish people ceased being homeless, ceased being stateless. Indeed, the fact that the First Zionist Congress, which we are commemorating today, is explicitly mentioned in our Declaration of Independence, highlights the importance of the founding Zionist ideals for the State of Israel and all its agencies. The Jews had reestablished their independence and then sovereignty, building a vibrant national life, a successful economy, and a strong, very strong democracy. Every Jew in the world had a place to call home, Every Jew facing persecution had a guaranteed refuge. And most importantly, as a sovereign people in its homeland, not only had the Jews achieved equality among the nations, but they had reestablished their ability for self-defense against all those who would do them harm. Instead of having to beg others to protect them, the Jews were now empowered to defend themselves by themselves. It was not by coincidence that shortly after independence in 1948, the Israel first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, ordered the creation of the Mossad. The Zionist vision, which echoes from Basel to Jerusalem from 1897 until this very day, has been the guiding light of the Mossad since its founding. Ben-Gurion knew 
that in addition to the Israeli Defense Forces, Tzahal, that there was a critical need for a strong proficiency in intelligence and in special operations. Such a capability would be vital in protecting the newborn Jewish state from its enemies. Since being established, much of what the Mossad has done remains secret. As a result, the public only has a scattered understanding of the Mossad's activities. But maybe some are familiar with the capture of the Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann in Buenos Aires in 1960. He was brought to trial in Jerusalem for his part in the Holocaust. Others may be aware of the crucial role, role played by the Mossad in bringing, bringing Ethiopian Jews to freedom in Israel. And perhaps you have heard about various Mossad operations against terrorist organizations all over the world. But these examples are only a fraction of the countless clandestine operations where the Mossad has acted on behalf of the Jewish people. Ladies and gentlemen, I was born in Jerusalem as a member of the eighth generation in Israel. In 1983, I was recruited to the Mossad, to the operational track. And for decades, together with my colleagues, many colleagues, I was dedicating to ensuring the security of the state of Israel, the citizens of Israel, and Jews around the world. In 2013, I was nominated to be the National Security Advisor to the State of Israel, and in 2016, I took command of the Mossad. During the period in which I served as Mossad Director, I had the major central focus to prevent the Islamic Republic of Iran from building nuclear weapons. The regime in Tehran is the world's number one state sponsor of terrorism. Till today, it has openly and repeatedly called for Israel to be wiped off the map. Iran has officially encouraged Holocaust denial. Iran seeks to encircle Israel from Gaza in the south to Lebanon and Syria in the north, and it funds trains and arms, terrorist groups like Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Islamic Jihad, enabling them to shoot thousands of rockets to Israel's civilian population. This fanatical regime must never obtain the ability to accelerate its weapon of mass destruction that would be used against the Jewish state. During my term as Mossad director, countless operations were conducted against Iran's nuclear program. First, we needed to ensure that the State of Israel and the world knew exactly what Iran was doing, when, and where, and how. This we did. Second, we needed to do what had to be done to destroy to disrupt and to wreck Iran's plans to build the bomb. This we did too. Without going into too many details, I can tell you that the Mossad had many success in its fight against Iran's nuclear program. And in doing this, we operated around the world and on Iranian soil itself in the very heartland of the Ayatollahs. Famously, we located and brought to Israel from Tehran the secret Iranian nuclear archive. The thousands of documents in the, archi in the archive provided clear evidence that the Iranian regime was lying when he told the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna, 
when he told other nations and leaders that its nu nuclear program is purely for peaceful purposes, a complete lie. We reached the regime's own internal documents that unequivocally demonstrated that despite its campaign of concealment and disinformation, that the goal of Iran's nuclear program was not nuclear energy for peaceful reasons, but to build nuclear weapons, nuclear bombs. These countless operations were the building blocks of our strategic plan to stop the Iranian nuclear program. Guided by the clear goal of doing everything in our power to prevent Iran from ever becoming an existential threat to the state of Israel. Today, this very morning, as the nuclear talks with Iran are ongoing, and a new agreement, a new JCPOA, is about to be signed, we in Israel will continue to do whatever it needs to be done to prevent Iran from ever building the bomb. <laughs> For we can never allow a regime that calls and dis for this, uh, our destruction to get its finger on the nuclear trigger, period. That was my commitment to the people of Israel as the director of the Mossad. And I believe that this is Mossad's commitment to the people of Israel from now on, despite the agreement, despite the JCPOA. Ladies and gentlemen, at the same time, I want to emphasize the importance of the Mossad is not only in its ability to gather intelligence and special operations and to reach our enemies. It is also in its key role in promoting peace with the nations of our region. The Mossad has invested extensive efforts in building ties with the region, region's leaders and counterparts. And you are all aware of the result. The historic Abraham Accords signed almost two years ago. I hope and pray, Bezrat Hashem, that more nations from our region will soon join the trend of peace. The State of Israel became a technological powerhouse, having evolved from startup nation to a scale-up nation with tech capabilities that represent the lighthouse for the entire world. The Mossad can only operate when being supported by high-end technologies, mainly innovated in Israel. Therefore, the Mossad is also known for its advanced and impressive te technological capabilities, which ensure a high-quality response to all security and operational needs. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel and the world owes a huge debt of gratitude to my colleagues, the brave women and men of the Mossad. For their professionalism, commitment, and creativity, for their endless dedication and devotions to Israel's security, and most of all, for their courage and sacrifice. To ensure the safety of the Jewish people and the Jewish state, the women and men of the Mossad are motivated by the values of patriotism, values that were here at the first generation of Zionist pioneers who built the foundations of the Jewish state. The State of Israel in 2022 is a homeland where the Jewish people can realize their national and religious aspirations and where every Jew can live in freedom and security. 
Every Jew has the right to make aliyah and build life in the land of Israel. With your permission, a few words in Hebrew. החיבור ההיסטורי של העם היהודי לארץ ישראל לא נתון לדיון, למשא ומתן או לשאלה והוא יסוד קיומנו גם בעת הנוכחית. <אז> בשל עוצמתו הרוחנית באלפיים שנות גלות, ללא עוצמה צבאית, ללא עוצמה מדינית, ללא עוצמה ביטחונית או מודיעינית, בשל עוצמתו הרוחנית של העם בכל השנים האלה, בשל ההיאחזות של אבותינו ואימותינו בתורת ישראל ובחזון היהודי הציוני, הגענו לעת הזאת. כל עוד בלבב פנימה נפש יהודי הומייה, etc. נמשיך לוודא את קיומנו בארצנו מתוך אחדות ושוויון. בשוויון מגולמים גם ערכים של שוויון בחובות, כמו גם שוויון בזכויות. מגילת העצמאות קוראת לכל אזרחי ישראל ליטול חלק בבניין הארץ על בסיס אזרחות שוויונית. ביטחון הוא חשוב מאוד, איננו רק זה עליו אנו עמלים מפני אויבים מבחוץ. תחושת הביטחון איננה רק בשל מבצעים עלומים מחוץ לגבולות המדינה. ביטחון הוא גם התרגום המעשי של חיי היום-יום בתוך שטח המדינה. מנהיגות לאומית חייבת להאדיר את נכסי צאן הברזל היהודים והדמוקרטיים שלנו ללא מורא או חשש מביקורת מהעולם או מתוכנו. יש בנו את המיוחד הזה שלנו, שהוא מיוחד רק לנו, אנו מתלכדים בעת צרה. אבל ניתן אף רצוי שנתלכד מחדש בכל יום מימי השנה, איש לטובת אחיו, אישה למען רעותה, נתווכח עד חורמה, אך נעריך, נכבד ונאהב גם את אלה שדעתם לא כדעתנו. כל עוד מטרתם וחיזוקה של מדינת ישראל ומוסדותיה. <אח> החוסן החברתי של, חול... של כולנו חשוב ושקול כנגד החוסן הביטחוני. לכן, יחד עם רבים אחרים, אני לוקח חלק בעמותות חברתיות, לנוער במצוקרה, לנוער לקראת גיוסו, כעמותת אחד משלנו, ובמיוחד, וגם בשל קשר אישי עמוק. לנושא, לעמותת גדולים במדים, עמותה ששוקלת על גיוסם ושילובם של נערים ונערות עם מוגבלויות לשירות משמעותי בצבא. Ladies and gentlemen, even today, and since this significant first Zionist Congress, the State of Israel and Jewish around the world are still fighting for security and peaceful existence. We will continue to realize the vision of the rebirth of the Jewish nation in its homeland, the vision that became to life in Basel 125 years ago. God bless you. God bless the State of Israel. Oseh shalom b'mromav, u'yaseh shalom aleinu. ועל כל ישראל, תודה רבה. אמן.